Hi everybody, it's Kathy and welcome to another weight loss video. I'm going to be straight up with you. I am still struggling. July has been a difficult month, but I have sat down and I figured out a plan and I'm going to show you how I'm going to get the weight loss struggle bus out of the ditch and back up onto the highway. I knew that losing weight at 54 wouldn't be as easy as it was at 24 or 34, but I never dreamt that it would be this hard. And it's not even so much about trying to lose Lose the weight is trying to find the motivation every day and my motivation is nowhere to be found and I don't know why and I don't know how to get it back. When I decided to share my weight loss journey I did it partly because I thought it would hold me accountable but I'm realizing now that it doesn't and I never said that I would be perfect. I never said come here every month and you're going to see five or ten pound losses every month, but I always promised you that I would be real and honest and this is me being real and honest. Basically for the month of July I just started the month kind of in the same headspace as I was all June. If you haven't seen that video you should really go watch it because we really dove deep and it really resonated with quite a few people and they were feeling the same thing. So I was kind of embarrassed this month thinking, oh why even bother? Like I haven't lost any weight. I've stayed the same, thankfully. Don't ask me how but I have. I haven't exercised and I haven't exercised now in two months and I feel like I'm letting you down because we started the spring off you know all gung-ho I wanted you to walk 30 minutes a day with me and a lot of you have done so and you're still doing so and I'm so happy that you know I, I got you moving now I can't I kind of hope can you like motivate me to move it's just been a few things have happened in July I'm not going to go into the details but Oh, this construction never ends. I am a caregiver of somebody that's been living with cancer for the last 28 years, my husband. And he's been very, very ill at certain times throughout the last 28 years. And he had an episode earlier in July. And it wasn't like anything serious like we had went through in the past. But when he goes through like an episode, it just brings back all those emotions, all the difficult times we went through in the last 28 years. Those are the feelings, I guess, that are buried that I was talking about last month, that as we lose the weight, like, things come up. And it was just too much for me to bear mentally. I'm just being honest. Like, I struggled in July just, like, dealing with that, his illness, dealing with all that emotion coming back up. And I think part of it is we're coming up on the 28th anniversary of when he was diagnosed with cancer just out of the blue. Like, we didn't even know he was sick. And, you know, in the last 28 years, there's been lots of doctor visits and chemo and uh, he had a bone marrow transplant. And we were told, my daughter and I, three separate times, go to his bedside and say goodbye and go plan for his funeral because he's not coming home. So those sort of things, when you live through them, unless you have lived through something like that, I don't really think you can appreciate what it does to a person inside. I know there's lots of people that are caregivers for chronically ill people, and it's lonely and it's tough. And I am not someone that easily opens up about my emotions. I'm a very private person. And you're saying, why are you sharing all this now on YouTube? Because, as I stated earlier, I thought by sharing my weight loss struggles, it would keep me motivated. But in sharing, I have realized I'm not alone and that a lot of you are feeling the same way I do. So if I deal with these struggles, then I must not be alone because there must be somebody that's watching this that can understand how I'm feeling. And I'm not using it as an excuse, okay? This isn't, oh, whoa, poor me. I'm being honest and I'm telling you exactly how I feel inside. And whenever my husband was very, very sick and dying, basically, that just kind of overrides everything. Yeah, the first thing to go out the window is caring about myself, nutrition, and exercise. So exercise has never been a priority in my life. I wish that it had been. I wish that, you know, I would have been a child that was very active in different sports and such but back when I was growing up there wasn't a lot of extra money to get involved in stuff like that and I 
spoke about in the past, you know, when you're a child and you're rewarded with, here's 25 cents. So you go to the store and you get 25 one cent candies. And I'm not blaming my parents. Like, I'm not blaming anybody. I'm just saying I think that is where my sugar addiction started. And, oh boy, sugar, that it's a real beast. Like, I don't know how to kind of uh, tame it. And I know some people have said, well, just throw everything out and, you know, that's what worked for them. Well, that's wonderful, but it's not going to work for me. I've tried that in the past. So what I have done is that I'm a visual person. I still write things on a calendar. Even though I put them in my phone, I just find that I am more apt to remember things if I actually put pen to paper. So I want to show you this little thing. I typed in Google weekly planner from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m. and it showed me this one which actually goes from 6 a.m. to midnight and that's fine. I'm going to put this on my fridge and I know if I see it every day and I say oh Kathy has an appointment to go work out then I'm gonna go to my basement and I'm gonna walk on my treadmill or do my walk away the pound DVDs or once it gets cooler I'll walk outside because I really do like walking outside but it's been horribly hot here. It's like 40 Celsius plus humidity so I haven't been outside much. The other thing that I struggle with is because my YouTube channel has grown like so much and I'm so so thankful for it and for all of my new subscribers that I'm really treating it as a full-time job and sometimes I get so engrossed in my work that I don't know when to quit. As you can see on the timetable I'm quitting work at 4 and try and quit at 4 because we usually have supper around 5 30 and I'm going to take 20 minutes to stretch or to meditate because I find I'm getting very stiff and I need to start stretching because I don't like all these aches and pains I'm getting in my body and I know that it's because I have a sedentary life. If I don't tell myself to move I'm probably not going to and something else I wanted to bring up I have an Apple watch that my husband and daughter gave me a few Christmases ago and I really do love it but you know what I haven't worn it once in July and I believe I subconsciously didn't wear it because I had no plan on following Weight Watchers this month and I had no desire to work out. So I find you don't have to have an Apple Watch. You can have a Fitbit or, you know, any sort of a fitness tracker. For me, I find if it's on my wrist, it's kind of like a drill sergeant saying, you're not getting your steps in, you gotta move. So I have to get back into the habit of putting that on every day. I also think partially what is going on is that my hormones might be out of whack because I am 54. I haven't went through menopause. I'm still in perimenopause. I saw my gynecologist what, four or five months ago, she assured me I'm still in perimenopause. I think maybe hormones might have a, you know, a part in that too. And lack of sleep. For me, sleep is a big thing. Like, I have not been sleeping well, partly because my husband wasn't feeling good, and then I made the mistake of letting Buddy come back into the bedroom, and then he walks all over my face at night. And if we don't leave him in, then he screams all night, so it's just easier to let him come in, and then he's good. But I just don't get my sleep, and if I don't get my sleep, well, the next day when I get up like it's just gonna be a write-off because I know what I'm like. I am one of those people that is all or nothing. I am very very hard on myself. There's nobody you will find in this world that is harder on me than myself. Hopefully you know implementing this little tool that I can put on my fridge and like I said I'm gonna try and treat my 30 minutes of exercise like I have a hair appointment or a doctor's appointment and then my day can begin with all of my other chores and I really would like to end the day with stretching or 10 or 15 or 20 minutes of just a quiet meditation to quiet my mind. I am on 24 7 on my YouTube channel like if somebody leaves me a comment I like to answer them right away because I want you to know how much I appreciate you taking the time to watch my videos but also to comment. So I feel the pressure that I need to be available my whole waking time. I think that I need to set boundaries and I can only maybe answer my comments during the working hours and have my evenings where I'm not on anything electronic because that can disrupt my sleep pattern as well. And I really need to find a way to um, kind of wind down. So I'm implementing the little thing on 
on the fridge. I also am going to make a conscious effort to have freshly chopped vegetables in the fridge all the time for snacking. I also want to sit down and I want to get two go-to breakfasts. I'm the type of person that I can eat the same thing every day. It doesn't matter to me. Normally, I like to have my little Greek yogurt with berries and granola on top, but if I'm going to be exercising, that means that I can't eat until after I exercise. So I was thinking of maybe trying to find some healthy green smoothies. So if you have any recipes that you could think of to share with me, I'd really appreciate that. I can't eat for an hour after I get up because that's when I take my thyroid medication. So I'm not supposed to have any dairy or anything for an hour after I take my, um, my thyroid pill. I just want maybe two quick meals for breakfast and then I'm going to sit down and I'm going to find some recipes for a nice lunch, like maybe five lunches. And then I can sort of already have the points figured out, you know, have the recipe ready to go and maybe even batch make stuff. Because, you know, if I'm working, then I just have to go to the fridge, get my portion and eat it. So I think what's really going to help me is if I get better organized and actually take the time to think about what I'm going to eat and when I'm going to eat it and do some meal prep. I think that those things would help me out very much. It's so convenient and so easy like just to you know grab something to eat to go and for me I believe that is probably my Achilles heel just eating out too much and not making healthy choices eating out. I don't have a lot of junk food in the house because we're not like chip people and I do like candy and occasionally yes I will buy a little bit of candy but I've been trying not to have it in the house because I know that it's um a danger for me like it's, it's what you call it like a red flag food and I hear the landscapers machine gonna start up again so anyways I just wanted to come on here today and you know share my struggles with you like I am not perfect but I also want to know have you struggled in July or if you haven't what has helped you to not struggle and I want to hear about that you're doing the 30 minutes a day walking. And honestly, living with all this noise every day doesn't help. <laughs> it puts me in a really rotten mood. It's so hard to like do what I do and find any quiet time to create a film or a video. I'm starting August armed with my my schedule for uh, working out. I'm going to wear my Apple Watch and I'm going to I'll get up every day and be thankful that I'm healthy and nourish my body with healthy food. And I never promised to be perfect, but I did promise to be real. And yeah, this whole weight loss thing has been difficult to share. I don't really want to be here today telling you all about this because it's embarrassing, but you know what? It's life. So I think the fact that I didn't gain, I've actually stayed the same. I think that tells you that I know up here like what I have to do to maintain my weight. It's just I need to get back to exercising and I... I I think that if you're a young person watching this, you know, the best thing you can do for yourself is start exercising when you're young because it just becomes routine. It's like brushing your teeth. And I see my daughter do that. She works over an hour and a half every day on her Peloton bike. I wish that I would have kept that up because when I was in my late 20s, I was working on the farm, dairy farm, full time. But I still exercised every day as well, whether I wanted to or not. And I just don't have that drive right now and I need to find it because I don't want to age and be, you know, all out of shape and have aches and pains and everything that goes with aging. So that's my truth for July and um, I guess look for some what I eat in a day type videos. I'm going to try and get back to them. I'm not going to try. I'm going to get back to them. I have lots of fun videos planned for August and thank you so much as always for all of your support, all of your lovely notes. Thank you to all of my wonderful new subscribers and my subscribers that have been with me for so so long. I cannot tell you how much I appreciate each and every one of you. So I hope that you have a wonderful August and I'll see you soon. Bye.